If it breaks there, then you have plenty of, of string that you can use to tie. If it breaks here, which is relatively common, and you don't have enough string to tie it. I've seen, and I've even in a pinch, like if you're, you know, 200 miles away and you're never gonna come back ever, then you can like uncoil some of this so that you have enough and you can tie it on this side of the A-graph, but that's very much the exception. We don't wanna do that if we don't have to. But in this case, it broke at the Beckett, so we have plenty. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Great, thank you. So the first thing, round nose pliers. I'm gonna go around. What is that, 270 degrees? Okay, and kind of back on itself. Squeeze that closed a little bit more. Okay, you see that? Okay, so here's the whole concept. It's, it's essentially a square knot, so that the tighter it gets, the, the, the tighter the string gets, the more it like bears against itself. So for example, if, if I were to put this string in this way, as it gets tighter, it's gonna open up the hole and it's gonna be able to slip out. See how that slips out of the side there? Everybody see that? Okay, but if you put it in this way, as it tightens up and comes down, it forces the little tail there onto itself, okay? So we're gonna duplicate that on the other side as well. So this one, I went, up, well, from my perspective, I guess, up and to the right, and then forward on the front. And then on the old string, I'm gonna go up and to the right, and then to the back, okay? The opposite of what I just did. So can you see, can you see what I'm doing? I don't know if it's, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a tail there. So I'm going to the right. That's just kind of what I'm used to doing. Just going always to the right. And then I'm gonna to go to the back because it's the opposite of what I did on the, on the new leader. Okay, you see that? And then for this, let's see, I've got to think through it. If I go, yeah, I think it's this way, just kind of put it over, although that might not be enough space to put it on, maybe I can go this way. Okay, so I've got it on the, on the other string mm -hmm. there. And then you see how if I then pull it forward, now it, it forces the little tail against mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let me go all the way to the end there to give plenty of leader on this side. Okay. Now am I gonna go through this way or am I gonna go from underneath? Mm -hmm. Underneath, that's right. Okay, now it's a square knot. Okay. You see that? Sorry. Get out of your way. See how that works? Yeah. So both little tails are bearing against they're going back and bearing against each other. Mm -hmm. If it's the opposite, then it'll just pull right apart once you put any tension on it. 
And then I'll tighten it up just a little bit. So it doesn't threaten anybody's eye. Okay, usually, usually I do four fingers on this one because this is gonna actually take up, tightening this thing is gonna take up like a, probably a full coil, maybe even a little bit more. I'll go with I'll go with three fingers and go like a tight three. Okay. By tight three, I mean like so. There's three fingers, and then I'll just go like in a little bit. Thanks. Is this the pin yeah. that was the next size larger? And then I'm gonna go, usually I do two and a half or two and three quarters turns, but this one I'll do, there's one, probably about right there. That's like almost two and that should fit. Yeah, it fits perfectly. Instead of doing two and a quarter, you're doing one in a little bit? Yeah, probably about one and three quarters. Something like that. So usually I do two and three quarters and I did one and three quarters about. And then always, by the way, make sure that before you do all of this, that this is going through the A graph. That's a, that's a good thing to always check or else you gotta start over. <laughs> I think I'll use this one just because it has a long handle there. Okay, now when I pull this up, yeah, it's about 120. And then going down, it's 160. So nice and tight. A lot of times this tool doesn't fit. You can get in there. You can also use a screwdriver or a hook. Okay, when I put a little bit of tension on, but not much. I mean, it's still really floppy, right? That's the other, that's the other string. That's not the, that's not this one. It's just super floppy. I just put a little bit of tension on it and now I'm gonna use the, the vice grips to push that Beckett in the hole. Vice grips, because you have the compound action, you get a lot more leverage than you do from this, okay. And I'm gonna do that another, let's say I've done it, I've done it, this is my second time, like I, I put it, I tightened it in when I first put it in and then again right now, and I'll probably do it a third time. Make sure it's nice and tight on the coil. Okay, do you see the, as I tighten it up, do you see the, the knot tightening? Is that knot kind of tightening in on itself? Tighten up that becket again.
All right, so, so usually as you, as you pull it tight, you can, you can definitely hear it, the pitch go up, but when you've got a knot, because, because that, that knot is tightening on itself, the pitch sort of stays the same while the knot tightens. And then when the knot is tight, then you hear the pitch raise. Okay. So usually that pitch is raising quite a bit faster than it does now, than it is with... It's going to get a little sharp there. Tighten the, too high to... I'm gonna tighten the coil a little bit. Do you have a little piece of I... brass? to help you get this just right. Thank you, <laughs> Is your pet gonna help with this training? Yeah. Good. Oh, Watch good. out, Brielle. Well, maybe you should stand back. <laughs> and maybe anyone in line. Eye goggles. <laughs> so, so we're an octave low right now, so we'll lift it up, bring it up, and we'll, this is the part of kind of uh, cross your fingers, <laughs> that's right. should film from <laughs> right there. <laughs> I think so. Is it 14? So, damn, I don't know. I'm just matching the other yeah, one. Yeah, don't match the other one. I don't. I haven't done anything. <laughs> 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 the other ones are not a good guide. It's a B. It's a B2. Good thing you checked. I'm like, that just sounds high. Why was the other one so high? <laughs> Do you know why the other one was so high? I'm glad you checked. Like, that just sounded high for a bass note. Yeah. Well, we went, we went like a good fifth or sixth Over. high, and the knot held. Tutting so, <laughs> okay, so come, come have a look at the knot now. You can see it's, um, it's really tight on itself. 
and the two little tails are Just, are like they're opposite each other mm -hmm. and they're bearing against the their respective strings. Okay. What was that? Ah, uh, see, 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 see. We do see. Like that, see. And then from here, we'll take it, you know, through. Looks like we got, and and even even though I did a tight three fingers, it's still the coils are still. It's like pushing four coils, which is more than we want. We want more like three. So I probably should have gone like maybe maybe like two and a half fingers. That probably would have been a better a better measurement, but whatever. I'm not gonna do it over just because it's four <laughs> coils. <laughs> four coils. The coils are nice and tight. And it's actually it's actually like a full three coils. It's not and it's bare it's almost starting a fourth. So it's I think it would still pass the PTG exam. <laughs> Do a string? Yeah, yeah, you have to do a knot. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but like, come on. How hard is it? You go up and to the right and forward and up and to the right and back. It's like learning to tie your shoes. Yeah, it's a simple knot. Just remember back to your Boy Scout days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you an Eagle Scout? Oh, yeah. If the string breaks like right here, how would you take off the coils right here? You have to just unwind them. Like, would you just start with pliers? I get a little screwdriver and just kind of, just kind of pick at it. <laughs> like, a, I just get a little tiny screwdriver and, and kind of pick at the at the end. And how do you know how much to take? Off? Depend. I guess it depends. On um, the string. I, yeah, that's a good question. I've actually done a marker, put a little marker mm. on it. And then I just unwind it to that to that marker line. But it really it really sounds awful though. I was gonna say I guess it doesn't affect the like the whole sound. It the totally does. Yeah, yeah. You can't get you can't really tune it well. You can you in general with bass with with wrapped bass strings, you have to choose the partial that you're gonna match anyway. And it doesn't always line up. Like usually it does. Usually you're gonna get your your first, second, third, fourth partials are basically going to line up, but every once in a while, especially maybe Victoria, you've seen some some bass strings that really don't line up very well, and so you kind of have to choose like which partial is the loudest, and then you kind of have to go with that. You've seen that McKinley many times, I'm sure, and if you unwrap the coil because you're in a pinch. Like I said, you only want to do that when you're in a pinch. Like, like I said, if you're 200 miles away and, and there's no way you're going to come back and the customer doesn't want to pay you to come back and you don't want to deal with the hassle or whatever, then, then do it. But it's an exception. Anyway, there's string tie. <laughs>